Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, we're going to look at these mid-ranges and see if you can tell if they're going to sound good or not just off of appearance. So if you're in a store, you pick one up, you find some random one, whatever, can you look at these speakers and tell if they're going to sound good or not? So within these six uh, mids, uh, we have two coaxials, three that would be considered a, a full range or mid range, a three inch, two four inches, a five and a quarter, an eight and a six and a half. Now all of these are priced very, very, very differently. So we have a wide variety of things that we can look at here, but we're gonna start with this four inch. You might think this speaker is pretty cheap, and it is, it's insanely cheap. The motor back here looks pretty big. You might think it's neodymium, it's not. This is actually shielding. So there's something around the motor that is counteracting the magnetic field of this motor. Uh, so if you have anything that's sensitive electronics can't have a magnetic field around it, that's where you'd use that application. Uh, tube TVs or monitors, which are not really made at all anymore, was something that would be affected by this. So that's why they exist. I'm not really sure why this one is the way that it is, but it is. They rate this one at four watts. I know this because it says so right there. Um, four watts is not very much. You can't expect a whole lot out of this speaker, but one reason why it is cheap, uh, the motor is very, very small, which we can't see because of the shielding. Uh, this has a three quarter inch coil, I believe, or possibly even half inch. It might be half inch, it's, it's very small. Stamp steel basket, another characteristic of just being cheap. Uh, and you can tell by the surround here, it's not going to move very much. So looking at the motor, if we could actually see it, we could see a little bit more uh, on its excursion capabilities. But from the surround alone, it can't move very much. It takes motion to get mid base or base or anything like out of that. Uh, we're talking about maybe maybe one millimeter, but I think it's gonna be a fraction of a millimeter of X-Max here. So I know what the speaker sounds like uh, from testing it. This is pulled out of uh, a machine, so I know what it sounds like, but uh, it kind of sounds like what you would expect this to based off of looking at it. Um, very, very cheap. Everything about it is cheap. Uh, but the key things to look at here, this around with next to no uh, room to move, a motor that's covered up, which is usually the first giveaway. Uh, this is for magnetic shielding. Very, very tiny coil, will not handle much power, rated for four watts. You really can't expect much out of this. In a car, this is kind of the thing that you would put uh, on a factory radio to make it make noise and then sell the car on. It's not something you're gonna wanna uh, listen to. And uh, if you just kind of look at the speaker, it doesn't really look like anything that would necessarily be very desirable. So in this case, yes, you can look at it and go, this probably isn't going to sound very good, but it's also extremely cheap, so that's a consideration. Next, we'll move on to this 3-inch. So this 3-inch is actually uh, one that uh, I've designed for one of our OEM customers that we supply to. And this one is a three quarter inch coil, copper. Uh, this one is rated for 20 watts RMS. As you can tell, it does have a pretty sizable motor on it. So we do have enough motor force that we could potentially get some uh, good X max, good mid base. Um, you can't always go off of just the motor. I mean, this just like with subs, but this also tells us that uh, we can put some power behind it and have some overhead and strength for accuracy. So this one has a carbon fiber cone on it. Not to say that carbon fiber is ultimately the best sounding thing or the ultimate in quality, but it does contribute to the cost. With the carbon fiber, we can get a little bit different sound than if we did paper. Uh, all of these cones have different characteristics. All paper cones don't sound the same. You can have different thicknesses, the way the cone is made. It will sound different with different masses, uh, but you also have different deflections with materials to where you might have one uh, area of bandwidth that might have a spike or a dip in it based on the material, or you can also have distortion. So the advantage we have here is carbon fiber is very light and very strong, 
so we don't necessarily have any weird distortions. When we have X-Max, which this actually does have, you can tell from the surround uh, that we have the ability to move quite a bit. There are limitations with the spider and the coil length uh, as well. So you can't always go off just the surround, just like with subs. But you can kind of push on this and see that it actually will move a fair amount for a three inch. So this tells me that we should be able to get a fair amount of mid bass out of this, uh, at least for its given size and the amount of air that it can move. Um, so we're looking at the quality of the material, which is good. We have a cast basket, which reduces possibility of resonation uh, in the basket. And uh, we're using copper wire. We have a large motor that should be capable of uh, being very accurate as long as we have low inductance. And we've got a fair amount of excursion. So this indicates we can probably get some good mid bass out of this. Uh, the, the caveat to that being, um, whenever you are at a larger X-Max, if you're near the outer limits of the surround or the spider, you can get mechanical distortion. So that is a consideration that's across any of them. So having some extra room to move and not using it can also help with clarity. On this four inch, same idea with the cone. We have the carbon fiber cone. We do have plenty of room for this to move. If I can get my finger in here, I'll... So we can move this quite a bit for being a four inch. We're also using three quarter inch coil. It is copper. We have pole venting on this one. Uh, this one is using a stamp basket. Um, and not to say that stamp baskets can't sound good. They can. Uh, there are instances where you can get some weird resonances. That is not the case with this one. This is a very high quality driver. Again, this is for one of our OEM customers. But this is built very similarly to the three inch. So you can just kind of look at the build quality and kind of see where the cost goes uh, in the materials. All the same things apply to the three inch as the four inch here. And we actually do get very good clarity. Uh, the spiders, it's kind of hard to look at the spiders and tell if it's gonna sound good or not. Um, if you have a progressive roll versus a linear roll, that'll make a difference. Uh, the materials themselves, um, if it's cotton, uh, it's going to flex a little bit more easily. If you use a very rigid material, um, something like Nomex, something like that, um, may not sound as good. But with this driver, does go to show that you can have a stamp steel basket, but sound very good because the suspension, the cone, uh, the surround material, all that stuff is high quality. So this would be the, the last thing to consider and if it's going to sound good or not. I know how they sound, so it's a little bit different than just looking at it not knowing, uh, but you can kind of see some of the similarities to the three inch on, uh, on what we're looking for on if we can pretty much tell if out of the gate, it will not sound good. Next, we move on to this eight inch. This eight inch is actually being used as a sub in some applications because it's an eight inch. So they thought it must be a sub. It is not, it is actually a mid. So this is rated for 10 Watts. And you can kind of guess by the motor size why it might be rated for 10 Watts. It also uses a one inch voice coil. First indicator, it's not gonna take a lot of power. Uh, you can tell from the motor depth, the coil length is not going to be very long, so it's not going to handle very much power versus like even the four inch, you know, we've got a much larger motor and much deeper, uh, so we can have a longer coil. So it's probably going to take more power as it does. Again, we can look at the surround. Uh, this is actually rated for one millimeter of X max. And you can tell by the surround, I mean, I can it's a very flimsy cone, uh, which I can you know, put my very small amount of force on the cone and bend that. But I can't get this cone to actually move without bending the cone uh, with my hand. So it is very lightweight, um, but is also going to be very prone to distortion. Um, if you notice, well, I'll show you on a, another one here where you can see a little bit better. But uh, this distortion is not just electrical. We can have distortion from physical attributes like the cone warping. Uh, so this, it won't move very much. If it did move more, we could actually get some resonance in the cone or from uneven pressure where this cone will actually start to bend and that actually does affect the sound quality and we have what's mechanical distortion. So this one, obviously we can't expect a whole lot of, 
Uh, this is one of those things you might be able to push on it and kind of figure out if it's going to have any amount of mid base or not. Um, just on the stiffness, if it's a really, really stiff mid, it's probably not going to have very much mid base. It's going to have a very high FS. And looking at the parameters, you may be able to tell some of that as well. In the case of this one, I actually took the parameters off this because I was very curious. The FS was 150 hertz. That is higher than uh, I think all of these, except for maybe this one. But uh, I know that's higher than this one, and I suspect higher than this one, and I believe it's also higher than that one. So this has an FS that is higher than a four inch. It's uh, not going to have any mid base. It doesn't have any excursion at all. Um, and this looks like a very, very cheap speaker, and it is a very, very cheap speaker. So now we have the five and a quarter coaxial. Uh, these are pretty cheap in terms of coaxes. Um, you can't really see the tweeter down in there. It is a soft dome. We can't see a whole lot more about it. Now, this cone you might think is a carbon fiber or some other exotic material, but is actually plastic. They put a texture when they stamp this so it looks like something more than it is. It is plastic. You can tell from the back, you have that same texture. All they did is put it in a stamp and, uh, and put the texture in there. So they're trying to fake looking like something high end, which if you just want the look of it, whatever. But if you want the better quality sound, you still have to consider this is a plastic cone. Uh, this may add some rigidity to it, so it might be a little bit stronger, but there is possibility for mechanical distortion with this. Uh, we do have some X-Max, not a whole lot, uh, but that does indicate that we can probably get some mid-bass out of this as compared to some of the other ones. Uh, this has got a foam uh, gasket down in here uh, to keep the gap clean. Uh, that is somewhat effective. Uh, it's better than nothing being there at all. But again, that kind of goes with being a cheap speaker. So if you look at the build quality, and the build quality looks pretty cheap, there's a good possibility they didn't put a whole lot of time into seeing how good it sounds. But not to say that this doesn't sound good. I haven't heard one yet. Uh, I've just got one of these uh, to play with, which I haven't done yet. So it may sound okay. Maybe it doesn't, but the build quality is so-so. Uh, again, we have a stamp steel basket, and uh, we have our connections. Well, this is done, and we have our filtering that is done right here. That is all passive. Uh, again, looking at the spider and coil, uh, we do have a little bit larger coil. Believe that's a one-inch coil. So this can probably take some okay power. Um, 50 watts, I don't see being an issue. The motor is decently sized, so there's a, a fair amount of motor force. Transient response is probably okay. So now that we've looked at a little bit better speaker uh, than these two and kind of along the lines of these, but in coax form, we'll go to the next step up. We have our Swag 6.5. These are the revised new version that are available on emfcaraudio.com. So the difference with this one that we can tell is one, we have a massive motor on this. There's plenty of motor strength and that's gonna be good for all the mid base that you can get because we have quite a bit of throw on this. This one also has a carbon fiber cone that is actually carbon fiber. It's not the stamped plastic. So we don't have any weird deflection or anything like that. Uh, it is a very durable cone, it is a very strong cone. So we don't have any distortion uh, right until we get to the very limits of the surround uh, and the rest of the suspension. We also have a rubber seal down here. Uh, this does not really do anything for the suspension itself. Um, it does add a little bit of stiffness to it because it's connected uh, completely, whereas the five and a quarter was not. Uh, so this is connected at the cone and all the way in there for an airtight seal. So this does do a little bit for the suspension, uh, but not a whole lot. We have a hard dome tweeter that's going to be a little bit more efficient, give you a little bit crisper highs to the soft dome. Um, we have a cast basket, which again, we're not going to have any weird resonance, anything like that. So when we've got all this mid-bass happening, 
This is not going to be vibrating funny or causing any problems, but also in mounting, it's going to be very stable. So we don't have uh, this binding up, uh, moving around the spider, causing the coil to rub in the motor or anything like that, which I've seen on some uh, stamp steel baskets. Uh, if you don't mount them perfectly straight, um, if there's some kind of tightness to the hole, that's what she said, it uh, won't uh, cause any problems with that, um, clamping down on it or distorting that. We also have uh, passive filtering on this. Um, so they're not going to blow up from you having it inappropriately crossed over. Anybody that has actually heard these things uh, know they, they do sound absolutely incredible. And if you look at the build quality on these, it's a very, very well-built driver. So that's an indication of cost. This is the most expensive one of all of these six. But when you just you pick it up, you feel it, it does feel like a quality product. And if you put the feel and the fit and finish into it, you probably put the effort into the actual sound quality itself, not just a piece of bling that sounds like garbage. So this is gonna be our, our most expensive, but our best sounding driver, just from uh, the appearance of them, but it actually is in reality. This one is the second most expensive, and when you just look at the way that it's built, it does give the indication that it's okay quality. It is cheap. Um, you can only expect uh, what it costs out of it. Uh, everything's cost that way for a reason. And we're dealing with really, really cheap. You have to expect this is probably not gonna sound good. And in reality, it doesn't. It's very, very mid-range strong. That's all it does. It doesn't handle very much power, but it is very cheap. Same thing with this guy. Very limited bandwidth, no mid-base. Feels cheap, looks cheap, is cheap. Both of these guys, they look like a better product, they feel like a better product, and that is also reflective in the design. They actually do sound like the better product. So can you tell if these speakers are gonna sound good by just simply looking at them? To some degree, yes. You can look at the build quality of all these speakers. And if you put the effort into the build quality, you probably put the effort into the sound quality. If they look cheap, they probably are cheap and they probably don't sound that good. Not to say that there isn't a diamond in the rough there, but on the whole, that's generally the case. If it looks the most expensive, does it mean it sounds the best? No, not really, that is also not the case. But when you're dealing with super cheap or somewhere in the middle, it's at least something to look at and consider. Things are cheap for a reason. If you have something that's rated for 150 watts and it has a three quarter inch coil, it's not gonna take it. Uh, that's just one of those frivolous ratings. That's something to look at when you're handling the speaker. Look at the specs on it, Say, see what it says on the box or the spec sheet, and then kind of compare that to what you're looking at. If you, uh, if you pick this up and it says it's rated for 75 watts, you probably have to ask the question, is it really gonna take 75 watts? As opposed to this one that actually is rated for 75 watts. This looks a lot more believable for being rated for 75 watts. So use your common sense when you're looking at these. Make your own judgments if you can't hear them ahead of time. Maybe you'll get lucky and your, uh, your guess will be correct. Remember that the actual cost of them is not guaranteed to be a reflection of how good it sounds. But if this thing costs you $4, it's probably not going to sound as good as something else that costs quite a bit more. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. You can support us on Patreon in the link below. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook, also in the link below. You can support us by shopping emfcaraudio.com where we have the full line of EMF audio products, Sundown Audio, XS Power, SBC, and Audio Control. And I'll see you again in another Tech Stuff Tuesday.